I tended to do best at subjects that were uh, difficult to understand and you had to put in a bit of effort just to understand what the lecturer was talking about. And um, you know, one of them was um, semiconductors. It takes as a fairly large barrier to to understanding even the basics of, of the field. But as I grew a bit older, I was looking for something with a bit more social impact and um, I realised that my the expertise that I'd built up in microelectronics was really directly applicable to um, solar energy conversion using solar cells. To understand how a solar cell works, you first of all have to take Einstein's discovery that light, you know, as well as being able to be regarded as a wave, you could also think of it as particles, particularly when it, the light interacted with uh, solid matter. You can think of the sun is shooting little particles at you called photons and um, the solar cell responds to each individual photon so in it the uh, photons enter into the solar cell material and the energy that the photon has is given up in exciting electrons within the um, solar cell material itself into uh, higher excited states where they're free to move through the silicon material and then you design the solar cell so that it collects these electrons that are sort of released by the photons. So ideally you get each photon that strikes the solar cell that has sufficient energy creating an electron in the electrical circuit that you connect between the top and the bottom of the cell. And in that way you convert the light into an electrical current. I won a uh, Commonwealth scholarship to study in Canada at McMaster University and my new um, thesis supervisor was showing me around the labs and um, one of the other PhD students was measuring a, a device and the uh, professor who was showing me around said and we put a back cloth over it because otherwise it responds to light like a solar cell. And, uh, I found that the device is being studied um, you know, were really ideally suited for use uh, as solar cells and that uh, started me in a direction that gave me a unique uh, approach upon the field. My um, PhD thesis work proved um, very important to my subsequent career in that the devices that I was working on for my PhD uh, proved to provide another way of making a solar cell that hadn't really been fully explored before. NASA in the US had launched a program to try and improve silicon solar cell efficiency, mainly for their space cell program. And it, we were able to show that we were doing better than all the NASA contractors in terms of the voltage we could get out for a given amount of light being sh shown onto the cell. For that 25% efficient cell, we use what's called the PERC cell, P-E-R-C. That's an acronym that I personally invented along with the cell. We um, realized that the surfaces of the cells were very important and that's the area where improvement could be made in earlier cell designs. So we paid a lot of attention to improving the surface properties of the cells and um, the structures that I'd been working on for my PhD proved very effective for doing that. That passivated emitter and rear cell or perk cell, you know, it's now taken the world by storm. The third big um, contribution we made was the students that we trained along the way. So I have now supervised 120 PhD students in my career, uh, but many have gone on to do wonderful things within the industry. Yeah, I, I talk about uh, you know the flapping of butterfly wings because it's when you look at all the events that had to line up for the industry to evolve in the way it has, uh, it was just uh, serendipity upon serendipity that uh, got us to where we are now. I think the pace of change is going to accelerate, but the world will over the next uh, coming decade or two shift um, to solar energy and wind. So a huge transformation of historic significance underway at the moment.